Now, the diagnostic routine in the book has a couple of steps. Number one is shut the power off. That means shut the battery switch off. So my signal side through the transistor in the EDC processor, that's the one that's making the make and break to ground, or it's applying power, a high side driver. I can check for that, and I'm gonna check from ground all the way through that driver circuit through the EDC processor. And that tells me that that circuit is in good shape, okay? So we got a good connection, and again, 97.9. So we're up to 98,000 ohms. Again, if you're at 60 to 86 in the book, and you're at 97,000 ohms, you're off by less than 10,000 ohms. You're in the ballpark. If you're in the millions of ohms, you're out of the ballpark. If you're at zero or five ohms, you're out of the ballpark. The meter, the leads, all of the equipment, there's going to be some resistance in this somewhere, somehow. Every meter reads a little different. And you'd have to have an analog meter that you could zero to possibly get every value the same exactly correct, all right? So don't get stressed out about, my meter's off by you know, 97 instead of 86. As long as it's in range, it's close, go with it. It's not a bad circuit. A bad circuit will show up right away. All right, second test is checking the solenoid end prop, all right, between pins one and two, all right? And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the harness into the end prop, okay? And we're going to disconnect the harness. So that means we're gonna test the resistance of the solenoid. And that solenoid is a solenoid and most solenoids don't have high resistance so I need to unplug my lead here all right my second test is I've unplugged from my breakout box the harness I've taken my breakout box and I've plugged it into the end prop the other end of my connector is still disconnected from the harness so the breakout box is solely connected to the solenoid itself now what we need to do is measure the resistance of the solenoid. And I'm going to take my two meter leads and I'm going to put those on pin one and pin two. And we'll look and see what the resistance is. All right. So the resistance is giving me 3.1 ohms, no K, it's 3.1 ohms. And let's look and see what our book value is. Book value says it's two to three ohms. Perfect. Right on the money. So that tells me the windings inside that solenoid are all right, inside the M-prop, that magnetic proportioning valve. All right, so next test in the book, okay, is physically break into the harness. Now I'm gonna actually plug the other end into the harness, and then it says turn the key to the position zero, which basically means turn the battery switch on, turn the key on, and it says change the meter to voltage. So pay attention to the, what it's asking you to do in the book. All right, and then read through it and see what the value should be, all right? Don't just start you know, connecting the leads and hooking it up because you wanna make sure it says, measuring the alternating current between the connections one and two. So I'm gonna plug this in into my breakout box and I'm gonna plug the harness into the other end. Okay, I have plugged my breakout box into the harness. I've plugged it into the M-prop. This is the third test. We're gonna test the voltage going into the circuit. So make sure you read through the book, follow the procedures that it says, and if it says turn the battery switch on or you're gonna measure voltage, then make sure that you understand that you've gotta switch your leads and you've gotta turn it over to DC voltage. I also want to range my multimeter. Don't forget because you're probably going to read two decimal places. So I'm going to put my range on two decimal places. I have my breakout box plugged into the harness and plugged into the M-prop. I've turned the battery switch on. I've turned my multimeter to voltage as it says DC. And I'm going to turn the key switch to position one and we're going to see what the 